testing inside LightStage 6, which is our lab's largest device. This is the future of movies. What was once filmed on a soundstage is now shot on a light stage. This surreal laboratory is the brainchild of Paul DeBevick. He heads up USC's Institute for Creative Technology, and he's reinventing the way movies are made by digitally cloning actors. We want to create that perfect digital puppet that has every skin pore, fine crease, and the ability for any little twitch or bulge or buckle of skin that the real person would have had. More than 6,000 computer-controlled LEDs and 50 cameras capture every nuance. The key to creating believable virtual humans is how the computer measures both the light reflecting off the surface of the skin and the light penetrating beneath it. The result is a perfect digital clone that can be inserted into any scene. The evolving technology has been used in more than a dozen films. In Avatar, it plays digital humans in a virtual world. In Gravity, Sandra Bullock's face was scanned and illuminated to appear as if it were reflecting light from the space station. As you can see, life's going crazy. It's kind of like being inside a firework. Charlotte Copley plays King Stefan in the new film Maleficent. The lead actors were all scanned to create lifelike images for digital stunt doubles. And actress Imelda Staunton became the face of a fairy. Why is it so important that you get a picture of her with light from every different possible angle? If we want the digital character to look the same way as the real person would have, we have to know how that real person would have responded from light from the right, from the left, from above, from below. I'm totally enveloped in light right now. It's sensory overload. But it's more than just movie magic. The lab gets much of its funding from the Department of Defense to produce virtual reality training, Department of Defense to produce virtual reality training for the military. And in a revolutionary new project, the Bevic has teamed up with USC's Shoah Foundation to scan Holocaust survivors so their stories will live long after they're gone. We can project it in a way that it's life-size and it's 3D. It doesn't require 3D glasses. 81-year-old Pinchas Scooter survived five concentration camps. When the project is complete, his holographic image will be able to interact with students through voice recognition. This is a lullaby that my mother used to sing to me, and I still remember it. It creates eye contact, so it's more engaging. It's engaging, it's visceral, it's very much from the kind of the soul of the individual. As display from the kind of the soul of the individual, as display technology gets better, which it will do as the years go by, and we'll get used to seeing holographic display in our everyday lives, this will seem very normal. The technology is evolving quickly, and the possibilities seem endless, especially when it comes to trimming budgets of summer blockbusters. And eventually, we're going to be able to make an entire Hollywood feature film that looks like anything on the epic scale of any huge production in a small room with motion capture, with light stages surrounding people by LEDs, and do it for a lot less cost. It's incredible to think about what you can do, but it also makes me wonder, what's next? Are you really gonna need actors? If I were an actor, if I were an actor today, I would definitely wanna get myself digitized. I would wanna keep that on my own hard drive at home and probably even license that to productions that want to do flashback sequences of me in the future. Or perhaps to eventually film without the real actor's participation. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Carter Evans, Los Angeles. It raises a mission to store it. Eventually, you could actually make a film with an actor who's no longer alive. Hopefully, they can never do that without TV news anchors. <laughs> <laughs> it's really scary. Yeah, well.